Okay, in the last tutorial we managed to make a model of the solar system and in this tutorial we will try to actually apply textures to them. And a texture is basically uh, an image that is mapped onto the surface so it's going to make these things sort of come alive a little bit. And I'm going to pick on Earth by literally selecting Earth and tapping Shift F to zoom in on it and then I will Control R and use the wheel mouse just to back off a little bit so we can see this with a bit better perspective. Now to, to apply a texture map to this, it's uh, like applying color, we have to go into the materials editor up in the top bar. Tapping that opens up our materials editor. I'll double click to make a new material and I'm going to give this thing a name. I'm going to give it the name Earth. And uh, in, inside the materials editor you can normally make a planet whatever color you want, make any object any color that you want, just by clicking the uh, color picker and then hitting the apply button. So we've just given Earth this Earth color, but we're going to do something more sophisticated than that. Double clicking it again, I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to go down to textures down below and textures lets you load up a file and the file I'm going to load is already preset here. I've got it located in here somewhere. Uh, let's see, solar system. Ah, yes, this is the folder I was building it. And in this folder, I was able to Google search maps representing each of the planets. And this one in particular is one of the Earth that worked pretty well. So I'll select it and select it again. And, and saying, OK, and by the way, the width and height of this is about 1024 by 512. Uh, you don't want it much bigger than that. It'll have more detail, but it'll also slow down the, pro the program. And you don't want it much smaller because you want the quality to be high, high enough. So I'm going to say OK. And it's under the ambient. I'm also going to put it under diffuse. Um, that is, it is going to have that normal ambient uh, color or that texture map. Diffuse is, um, I believe, how it is affected when light hits it. That will also reflect that. So I think I've got it everywhere I need it to be. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. And it automatically applies it because it was already applied. It's right there. And it's on the... Um, on the surface. And to see how this works, arc rotate lets you sort of spin around it and see the quality of what you've got. Here's our more familiar view, I guess, for North Americans. Now, I'll view it from the front again. If you want to have higher quality, you'll notice as we zoom in on it, the angles of the polygon do sort of show up, or the angles of the, uh, of the object show up. It's not a high resolution object just yet, but we could double click it and we could double, double the, div, the longitudinal and the latitudinal divisions. So if I double this to 24 and I take this one over here to 16 and say OK, it gets considerably smoother. And certainly smooth enough by the time you zoom out like this, it's going to be as highly detailed as you need it to be. So that's basically all there is to texture mapping. Um, it's a matter of preparing the, the graphics that are going to be mapped on. It's a matter of making the material. I'll pick on Venus right now. I can't emphasize enough that materials do need unique names to avoid confusion later and to simplify your life when you get into more sophisticated objects and material coloring. And remember that this will allow you to do colors, but this, textures, that's the secret. It allows you to go in and edit and load a texture and I got Venus there. Load it up, select it, say OK, and I'm going to load it up for ambient and diffuse, and say OK. And in this case, it's not going to show up because I haven't applied it to this object yet. So I select the object first, select the material, hit apply, and it all works. And I'll do this real fast. I'll speed up the uh, little time stretch here, or time compression, and I'll see if I can finish off the solar system. Okay, so there's all of our textures that have been applied. And again, if we wanted to make this thing of a little a little bit higher in quality, we'll double click the sphere and I'm going to double. There is a limit to how far you can push this, but 24 by 16 will give us very good results. 
So you can continue revisiting each of the planets and upgrading their poly count by double clicking them and changing the longitudinal and latitudinal divisions. Um, we have created a model with relative sizes of planets, but there's lots more that we can do. We can revisit this. We'll add some rings to Saturn and perhaps we'll model the sun as well. And down the road, perhaps we'll even try placing these planets at the accurate distances that they are from the sun and from each other. But that's, um, that's for another day. So thanks. Hope you learned a lot and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.